Welcome to the Nadium. This is Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Take a perfectly sealed, perfectly enclosed space and empty everything you can see from the inside down to the last grain of dust. Then suck out all the air, every molecule, every atom out of the container. Keep pumping until the temperature inside is near absolute zero and the pressure difference gets so intense that the whole chamber nearly implodes. Then you keep pumping until the pressure inside the vessel is less than what you would find light years away in outer space. It becomes as empty as a volume can get. In physics experiments, in practice, this kind of thing, achieving a strong or hard vacuum, is done inside special steel chambers. They have to be sturdy enough to resist many tons of weight pressing on the outside when there is nothing on the inside to push back. Even rubber gaskets are too leaky and copper has to be used to seal the vacuum chamber door shut. Even the slightest hole will send a flood of air into the chamber and ruin the experiment. Special electrical pumps have to run all the time just to account for hydrogen diffusing through the bulk steel itself. The hydrogen slowly sneaks its way in between the iron and carbon atoms in the steel, so it needs to be actively sucked out all the time just to keep the chamber empty. Vacuum physics experiments are notoriously difficult and often frustrating to pull off. The forces of nature really are working against you and leaks have a supernatural ability to find a way. A few years ago, you could have found me banging my head on a wall in my lab in school trying to figure out where a leak was and why I couldn't get a stronger vacuum in my chamber. There's a reason why scientists and engineers go through so much trouble to create the emptiest space possible. It's that strange things begin to happen in perfect emptiness. When the chamber is almost perfectly evacuated, with a near perfect or even perfect vacuum, ghosts emerge from the darkness. Things appear that are both there and not there. Physicists refer to these features as vacuum fluctuations or virtual particles. The counterintuitive and fascinating conclusion of all this vacuum physics work is that a perfect vacuum just isn't achievable. Emptiness doesn't and can't exist. These vacuum fluctuations are not just an abstraction in some crazy physicist's mind. They have observable consequences that can be directly detected in experiments. For example, an atom in an excited state won't stay that way forever, but will return to its lower energy ground state by spontaneously emitting light. This phenomenon of falling to the ground state is a consequence of vacuum fluctuations. Imagine standing a pencil upright on the end of your finger. It will stay there if your hand is perfectly still and nothing disturbs the equilibrium. But with the slightest perturbation, the pencil will fall into a more stable, lower energy, ground state equilibrium position. In the same way, vacuum fluctuations cause an excited atom to fall back into its ground state. This nothing being something phenomenon has some interesting consequences. Imagine taking two flat plates and arranging them so they're facing each other in empty space. I posed the question to the Vanadium audience. What do you think would happen? Your answer might be nothing at all, and that's definitely not unreasonable. But in fact, what happens is odd. In the empty space, both plates turn out to be mutually attracted to each other by the simple presence of the vacuum, the presence of nothing. This startling result was first predicted in 1948 by theoretical physicist Hendrik Casimir while he was working at Philips Research Labs in the Netherlands on another love of mine, colloids. This phenomenon is now called the Casimir effect, while the force between the plates is known as the Casimir force. So why are the plates attracted to each other? Why aren't they repelled? The reason is there are more virtual particles outside the plates than in between. So therefore, there is more virtual pressure pushing them together than pulling them apart. Even in the dark, there is more virtual light outside the plates than inside. The tinier the gap between the plates, 
the stronger the Casimir force. In the less confusing, good old days of classical mechanics, the idea of a vacuum was simple. The vacuum was what remained if you emptied a container of all its particles and lowered the temperature to absolute zero. The arrival of quantum mechanics, however, destroyed many simple notions and completely changed our concept of a vacuum. Even a perfect vacuum at absolute zero has ghost-like appearing and disappearing fields known as vacuum fluctuations. For a long time, the Casimir effect was just a theoretical curiosity, a fun little head-scratcher for scientists. But interest in this has blossomed in recent years. Engineers realized that the Casimir force affects the workings of micromachined mechanical and electronic devices, and advances in instrumentation have enabled the force to be measured with high precision. When the Casimir effect was first predicted in 48, it was nearly impossible to measure using the equipment of the time. One of the first experiments was carried out in 1958 by Marcus Sperne, also at Philips in the Netherlands. He measured the Casimir force between two flat metallic mirrors using a spring balance and a capacitor-based sensor. While the Casimir force is too small to be felt for plates that are several meters or feet apart, it can be measured if they're within microns or thousandths of a millimeter of each other. For example, two plates with an area of one square centimeter each, separated by a distance of one micron, have an attractive Casimir force equivalent to the weight of a water droplet. Although this force might seem small, at distances less than one micron, the Casimir force becomes the strongest non-electrical force possible between two objects. With a separation of 10 nanometers, or about 100 times the size of a typical atom, just these virtual particles in the emptiness produce a force with the same pressure as Earth's atmosphere. We don't normally deal directly with such small distances in our everyday lives, but they are very relevant in modern micro and nanoscale devices. Our many connected gizmos all rely on microscopic electromechanical elements and moving parts, sensors and actuators, all carved with light into a silicon substrate. Without accounting for the Casimir force, many of these elements would cling together, the devices would fail to operate properly, and basically the machines would self-destruct. The force of nothing demands to be understood. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.